All right, guys, we are live. Episode 84 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thanks for joining us here. We got an, what I'm calling the R Star cast is back. We got Kurt. Uh, Kurt's in the house from Adam's Arms, Team Adam Arms. And the, the definition of how to look like a pro shooter. Kurt, what's going on? No, not much. How's it going? Uh, I'm hanging in there, man. Feeling a little bit under the weather, like last week, but we're going to get through this one. We have a lot of good stuff to talk about here. Absolutely. Steve, Steve the Tank Durant. What's going on, man? What's up, dude? Ready to rock. Going to be a cool show. I like having multiple guests. Good thing. It's going to be fun. Yeah, I think that it's fun to do these shows every once in a while, and I don't have a script or anything I have to follow. Not like I do a real great job at following the script anyway, but <laughs> this one's kind of more like on the fly, so... Kelly Samsel's visiting here. What's going on, Kelly? Woohoo! Hi. You can't see me, but I'm here. Yeah, and uh, her audio is the best it's ever been. We can hear her like crystal clear. It's like she has like a three hundred dollar microphone she's speaking into. So, very nice. Nope. <clears throat> and then we have uh, we have Jeremy. He's the marketing representative for Grizzly Targets. He's also the guy running the zombie, uh, the outbreak zombie three gun CrossFit. Obstacle, all, Crazy. all of the above. Extravaganza. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's going on, Jeremy? What's up, guys? How are you? We're gonna talk a lot about this zombie match. I mean, we were all intrigued during the pre-chat. We got a, that's a lot of interesting and new stuff you guys are trying to pull off and put together here. So we're gonna talk a lot about that. So stay tuned. Uh, Dustin Palooza, what's going on, man? Looking good. What's up, guys? Back to uh, real life after uh, NRA show and traveling and now getting the, the schedules together. Very nice. And we got, uh, you guys might know her as uh, Danny Oakley or Danny Bryant. We got her back on the show. I think she was like, I'm going to go say episode 10-ish, 11-ish, 9-ish, somewhere in there. If you guys want to see more of Danny, we had her on that early of a show, probably like two years ago, so welcome back. It's good to be here. You got a lot of new stuff that you could talk about. We're going to hit that <laughs> shortly here, but I want to do a, a a local a local three gun club uh, of mine. Uh, they they do a three gun nation classifiers, and somehow I don't know the story behind it, but they got a DPMS 308 uh, rifle that they are raffling off somehow, and they wanted the shooter's mindset to choose the winners. So I'm going to go into we're going to do that right now because it's a that's going to be an awesome giveaway here. The odds are really good to win this thing. I don't know how I... I didn't even... My name's not in here, so I mean, I wish they would have told me about it <laughs> at least, but... Or how to get in there. Uh, but we're going to go to screen share here and just... So, uh, Anthony, basically, it's probably everybody who shot club series matches at that club last year. This right. is probably their giveaway gun for last year's club series giveaway. So, so there you go. He, he broke it down for you. So, 308... Uh, from DPMS are gonna is is going out to a lucky winner right here. We're gonna do this uh, nice. screen share stuff and let's get it going. All right. So obviously you're seeing my show notes here, but we're gonna go into uh, the email here. So here are the names. I got 48 names. Some of them are duplicate names, so I'm sure they had multiple entries somehow. But Tori Jordan, we know her. You know, we got T.J. Parrish, Ken Fusco. A lot of these I've shot with every one of these people on this list. Mm -hmm. So, JP. 48 names, yeah. JP, yeah, so obviously, so there's no gimmicks, make sure everybody's name is in there. We got 48. Crazy toddlers. Yeah, and we're going to do, uh, <laughs> we did it here earlier just to test out, so let's just refresh this. This is random.org, we got 48 names, let's not stress this any, uh, 48. So four, it's going to just choose randomly one out of 48, so number 8 is the winner. So who's number eight? John Rodriguez. All right. So uh, John Rodriguez <laughs> is the winner right there. That dude wins everything. Dude, I'm telling you, everything. Awesome. Sponsor shooter from Breakthrough Clean and uh, Hex Mag and sponsored by a ton of guys. I think he has more names on his jersey than I do. So congrats right to John. On. Awesome for the club to do that and that rifle. Right so on. DPMS 308. Yeah, nice. There you go. That Gen that G2 they're giving away every, at all the clubs is a nice rifle. So very nice. So we're gonna stop this here, and let's move forward here. The Q and A section, as usual, bottom left hand corner for those of you guys just tuning in. You guys can ask questions here live to any of us here on the panel. Also, if you head over to the Shooter's Mindset uh, Facebook page, 
Um, there'll be a post at the very top or our latest post where you can ask questions if you prefer to use Facebook. Um, so we're going to hit on, uh, let's let's go on to this first here. What do we have? Just what's new, what's going on with everybody? We'll start with Danny. Like, what, Who did you pick up? Who are you involved with now? Uh, what's new with you? Well, it's been, yeah, a lot's changed since we talked last. Um, I was just doing pistol stuff and instructing then. Now I've gotten into three guns since then, um, shooting for Team Double Dog Arm out of Illinois. Um, we have a bunch of sponsors with them. Uh, I know Leopold's on there, CMC Triggers, um, Frog Loop's one of my sponsors, Tough Products. And then for the pistol stuff, um, CZ Forum is representing me on that. So it is been very exciting and there's a lot going on. We're having fun and we have our business Diamond Defense up and running where we're doing um, all kinds of level classes for anyone who's looking to get involved or get, you know, carry a license here in Indiana because we don't have a required class. So we're trying to reach out to people and show them that it's still important to take a class even though you don't have to. Yeah, that's, that's great. So in Indiana, you how do you go about you just kind of fill out paperwork to get your concealed permit, is that it? Yeah, you just go down and get fingerprinted and give them like $125 for your lifetime permit. And as long as you don't have any felonies, they must issue it. And it's just a little pink piece of paper. There's no photo. There's no address. Just a little pink slip of paper. Yeah, so I agree with everybody definitely taking... Uh, a class, uh, especially you know, a well-taught class, because even me and Steve talked about this multiple times. And when when it comes to Florida, I mean, depending on who you go to, but most gun shops they put on a little a little BS CCW class, and then you fill out your paperwork and you wait to get your license in the mail with your photo on it. But it's definitely not enough to train you to even shoot a firearm. Right, and in in Texas, the the concealed handgun license class is all about. Uh, the laws and where you can carry, where you can't carry. Um, it's all about more legal stuff than uh, shooting. There's really actually no shooting instruction at all in the concealed handgun license class, and you have to shoot a 50-round qualifier that uh, pretty much any blind person should be able to pass. So. Yeah, kind well, of speaking of blind, it. Kurt... I've actually, about a month ago, two months ago, I actually had a legally blind individual pass my CCW class here in Missouri. So, uh, yeah, it's 20 rounds to warm up with and 20 rounds to qualify with at a B27 full silhouette target at 21 feet. So seven yards, you're shooting a, a huge-ass target, and you have to hit it 15 out of 20 times. It's 5% yeah. of 20 shots. So it's it's quite a joke, but and so um, ours is this ours is the same target. But it's twenty rounds at uh, three yards, twenty rounds at seven yards, and then ten rounds at fifteen yards. But you can pass the uh, get your license without ever hitting beyond seven yards. Yeah, that's like I said, we have nothing. So we have a lot of people come out that have had their permits for years. I mean, we've had some that have had their permits for thirty years and have maybe never shot their carry gun. So it's, I mean, it gets a little scary at times out there, but hopefully we're making at least a small difference in educating the people around us and concealed carry, so. That's why I love, that's why I love living in Florida. Do is fire three rounds safely. It doesn't matter if you hit anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. I, I think I shot a twenty two revolver. Three times at about three, three, three to seven yards, and that was it. You know, yep. there was no real instruction. I had to stand, had to grip it. There was nothing. Here's three rounds. Have fun. Boom, 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 and you're done. Get out of here, sir. Give me my seventy-five dollars and be on with your way. I will say that the very few times when I felt more like I should have body armor at the range than um, <laughs> when I have been shooting my uh, my qualifier next to the other people on the line. Uh, when I've renewed my license, so the nice thing is that my next renewal, which I think is in four years, I don't have to actually shoot the qualifier anymore, so because it's my fifth renewal. All right. Oh, Crazy. see, like yeah, for our renewal process, every five years, so we just pay fifty bucks and you're good to go again. There's no class or anything like that unless you let it expire, 
for six months, then you got to retake the class. Fifty bucks. So, I just yeah. paid ten dollars to renew mine the other day. Yeah, our renewal process. I just went to the sheriff's department since the DMV doesn't take care of it anymore. Sit through. Yeah, yeah. Sit through a half, a half, a half a day of law of basically the updates on the law since your last class five years before that. Yeah, and that's ours is ours is lifetime. So you know, once you pay them, you're good. What were you saying as far as uh, this topic you, re you just renewed? Yeah, um, it's like Dustin said, it's for five years this time, but the DMV doesn't take care of it anymore. You know, that way they can't, you know, track who has the guns or whatever. But <clears throat> all I did was pay ten dollars, and they gave me a new little, um, a new little card. <laughs> so, in your in your state, is the uh, having your concealed handgun license or your CCW, whatever they call it? Uh, a uh, get you around going through your next check when you go in to buy a firearm? No, yeah. you still do have to do your 4473, so uh, yeah. right. it, it doesn't help you out anything with that. So in Texas, you still have to do a 4473, but it doesn't get called in. Uh, your concealed handgun license number gets put in as one of the eligible exceptions to the next check. Hmm. Hmm. So, there's no, so, they so they don't have to call it in. Well, thank goodness it's okay, and even if they call it in, I'm not going to get <laughs> denied, so I'm right. not too worried about that. Very nice. All right, Kelly, what do you have new that's going on? It's been a while since you've been on. Uh, have you picked up anything new? What's going on with you? Not necessarily. Um, you know, that was always kind of a rough subject for me to, you know, pick up people or drop people or just do anything new, so... Um, not not really anything new. Um, I'm getting some new toys this week. Um, I have a Tavor coming, which is going to be awesome and so much fun. I'm super excited. And um, my oldest nephew got a ZK-22 from Joe Mo at um, Aquas Defense at NRA Show. And um, he is actually getting a suppressor for it, too, which is crazy because... He's gonna be like the only 14-year-old that has a suppressor, so that's awesome. I don't awesome. even have one of those. Right? Are you gonna do it? So, through, I guess through a trust, or you can put it in a trust for him. Right. Yep. We set up a trust, so he is. We we set it up so he is the final beneficiary. You know, he can't that's do cool. anything with it now, but right. um, yeah. You know, we, he'll always be on it. So once he gets older, you know, nothing will have to be changed. So that awesome. that'll be pretty awesome. A Tavor and a 22 silenced. I know. It's going to be like a bullpup. I told him today, I said, buddy, whenever we both get ours, I said, we'll have to set up some, you know, shooting gallery thing. It can be bullpup against bullpup. And he's like, I don't even know. He's like, I don't even know where you're trying. I'm going to beat you. So he's already <laughs> already overconfident. Yeah. Very nice. Very cool stuff. We're going to get Jeremy. I know you're kind of setting up here, but we're going to go to you in a second here. But, uh, any live questions that came in on, on Facebook? I don't know if anybody's there. Let me see on the Q&A stuff. I just posted up a thing. Yeah. Oh, we do we do have a couple here. Um, okay, this is from Ghost Warrior. He says, no question, just wanted to say hello all. I'm Richard from czform.com. So I know uh, Danny and Steve, you're involved with czform.com. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on over there? I'll let Danny take it, and then I can back her up. Yeah, um, CZ Forum, I mean, it's a, it's online, czforum.com, and it's a great place to go for anyone who, you know, owns or is thinking of owning any type of a CZ firearm. Um, there's pretty much every question imaginable on there with an answer. I I have, like, a post, like, a board, I guess. I don't really, I'm not a techie person, but I have somewhere where I can go and, like, ask and answer questions if people want to ask me things on there. But it's just a great resource. Um, it's a great group of people. Richard is amazing and probably one of the nicest people that I've ever met, so I'm really excited to be involved with them. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree with that. Pretty much touched on everything um, that I would have said. Also, of course, Danny and I are both team members. Um, they have a new team put together. We're probably, the us and one other gentleman, probably the most experienced team members and there's a couple up-and-comers they got coming along as well so 
just trying to push the push the team, you know, get that kind of out there and get a little publicity for the forum because the forums, like she said, such a good resource and it's just an awesome setup. So I'm happy, proud to be a part of it. Yeah, and my newly acquired husband, Josh Nickens, will be shooting for CZ Forum at the Bianchi Cup this year. So he's excited about that, and I am too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even if you're thinking about getting a CZ, you can probably find a lot of research over there. Yeah, uh, if it's you're like a guy like me, because it's a little bit weird. The CZ line, I, I asked Steve the other day, like they all look the same, and then there's like a target, a shadow, decocker, safety, single, uh, single action, and so, but they all look the same. So I have no idea. That's a good place to go and find out. I guess. That's true, and it's the czforum.com. That's yeah. important. <laughs> Very nice. The the CZ forum. Yes. Okay. I think. Do you, don't me, you have your hat on? Yeah, let me double check. I'm pretty sure it's just CZ. Just hold it up to your hat. I said the. It's a habit to say the, but it's just. No, I think it's just czforum.com. Right. It's just czforum.com. So www.czforum.com. All right, I put the in front of everything, like the. Uh, gotcha. Are you guys doing uh, banner ads on there yet? Not yet, but that's something that we're talking about. Come holler at me. I got a lot of startup clients that need some exposure, so. Awesome. That would be great. Well, they also might have some pretty uh, cool contingency stuff coming soon from some reputable company. <laughs> yes. There we we are definitely, uh, definitely on the way up. I'll get with you as well, Jeremy. Jeremy. Cool. <laughs> and I think the most one of the most interesting things we're going to be talking about on today's show, uh, along with many, but are the, the Jeremy Griffin is putting on a match uh, called the Outbreak Shootout, and it is probably something you guys always were thinking about doing when you were at matches, either in your head or wanted somebody to put on. And I think he, these people, they, Jeremy, got it nailed down here. So, Jeremy, tell us what, this is obviously the 25th and 26th of April, so there's only 10 days left, but there are some spots available for shooters who want to attend this thing. So tell us about what's the concept, what can we expect? Okay, so basically, um, first and foremost, anybody who's interested in it can go to OutbreakShootout.com. There's a ton of information on that website, probably too much at this point. It's just completely completely overloaded with information. Um, but with that being said, basically what we've tried to do is combine a Tough Mudder obstacle course with a three-gun match with a zombie race. And it's really turned into something that's kind of an interesting concept. It's getting a little bit of attention here from some pretty decent-sized groups. Basically what we're trying to do is create something that is like you said, kind of the thing that everybody always thinks about doing, but actually just going through and doing it, right? And it's the first one. It's going to, probably going to be a little rough for the day of execution. You know, we're we're hustling to get the rest of it taken care of. I've worked all day long on it. Again, I'm starting to, I can't almost wait for this thing to be over with almost at this point. It's consumed so much of my time. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be pretty cool. We've got great sponsors. We've got 10 rifles to give away, uh, American Tactical, Caltech, Young's Manufacturing, another outfit up in Ohio, uh, Tony's Customs, Noveski Rifles hopped on board. We've got Bushido Tactical. We've got Liberty Ammunition. We've got Grizzly Targets. EOTech gave us two of their, uh, their holograph uh, sites there. I think they were the 512s. Those are like 500 bucks a piece. So basically, you know, you're using all of this stuff over the course of this match, you get to use a lot of different stuff, and then we give it all away at the end, too. For the sponsors, you know, some of the shooters really didn't like not being able to use their stuff, but uh, something that people do when they're creating events, they're always focused on the participants. Well, we assume the participants were going to like this, right? Obviously. Focus on the sponsors. What can you do for the sponsors to give them the kind of value that makes them actually want to come on board, right? Because without them, you're not going to... Without them, where are you going? You need the sponsors. So create something that gives them maximum exposure, maximum marketing opportunity, stuff that they can use going forward afterwards in their marketing as well. Um, 
you know, it's like something we could do with this is get live video testimonies from all of these shooters. Ask them, you know, hey, what did you think about, you know, that that Young's uh, manufacturing rifle on stage five there? Oh man, that was great. But a lot of video test videos where it's at right now. We all know that, right? So, um, it, it it's a different type of an event. It's not the typical type of thing, and there's you know there's been a lot of confusion with it. I don't have you know twenty grand to drop into an advertising budget to let you know to to raise awareness on it. So we're doing the best with what we got, and you know it's 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 definitely taken on a life of its own though at this point. I've been pleasantly surprised with with the reception and the way things are going. So okay, so let me touch on a few things for you guys who are interested. This is in. Uh, where is this located at again? Manatee Gun yeah. Club? Yeah, Manatee Gun Club, which is about 20 minutes inwards from Sarasota. So pretty much anybody in Florida just about is only about, you know, two hours away from this thing. Okay. And this is April 25th and 26th. Also, there is going to be a, a, a shotgun and rifle along with rifle ammo and shotgun ammo provided for this match. So the only thing you need to bring is a pistol and 60 rounds of ammunition for that pistol. Obviously, your pistol rig and your belt and whatever you want to come dressed in. If you, if you want to come dressed in a zombie, I don't know, whatever, whatever, whatever you got. You want to put on a fancy jersey, you can do that too. There's going to be a variety of people. This isn't this isn't a match where all the pro three gunners are going to be at. Okay, This is a match for military guys, local guys, your tactical I was timmies. Say, not a lot of those yeah. normal shooters would make it through it. Like It's intense. I saw the website. It's going to be hard. <laughs> It, it's it's definitely made to be intense, and I would say definitely wear something that you don't mind getting destroyed, okay? Because there's going to be a lot of a lot of blood, a lot of guts. We're trying to get, and you know, I'm I'm going a little over the top in some stuff, but we're currently searching for a couple of butchers down there so we can get some real pig heads <laughs> to put on stage for the entrances to a couple of these stages. Uh, you know, we've got. I can help you with that. Oh, fantastic! I, the more honestly, yeah. the more you got, the better. I might want the guts too. Okay. Do we need to start calling up like uh, Greg Nicotero yeah. from The Walking Dead and <laughs> getting all I got crazy you on stuff. that. Don't don't run off before we exchange information. Okay, fantastic. You. So you know, with between between the obstacles, we got over twenty obstacles. We got five courses of fire. Each one of the stages for the courses of fire too, we're theming that. The first one's themed out as a warehouse. The second one is a chemical storage facility. The third one is just some kind of creeped out. We got a bunch of really old wooden fencing that we're going to create a little bit of a maze out of, shooting through the holes in the fence and stuff. Difficult shots all the way around. Fourth one's a military installation has been ransacked. Fifth one is kind of more of an urban environment. That was the one where we wanted to have people taking live paintballs coming at them on their way in and their way out, but again... That and we're we're setting this up as a spectator a spectator event eventually, and there's going to be a lot of people probably walking around through there. So we decided not to have the paintballs just flying <laughs> all over the place for this first one. Um, but yeah, I mean it'll be cool. The zombies are going to be have a lot of blood and guts on them. So if you're you know if you treat your jersey like it's your kid, make sure you grab an old one. All right. So yeah. So. Or you can just get a new one. And to just to talk a little bit, of, yeah, uh, talk a little bit more about this. There's no squads. There is, uh, I think there's 50 shooters. Maybe we can squeeze in. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know. There's 50, 50 slots in for this. Um, you can go to the to the website. What's the website? One more time. Uh, Outbreakshootout.com. Outbreakshootout.com. Okay, so you can go there. You can sign up. We got about 10, 10 available spots left for this event. Yeah, we've got a little handful of, of spots left, and I can always squeeze in a few more if need be. We went really conservative with everything, being that it's the first one. Um, you know, what, what? one of the things that we did, the way that I set this up was to for companies to showcase themselves, get exposure, and get video and shit that they can use going forward, right? So, like, Shadow Solutions and Aegis Tactical are two gun shops here in the area. They got tickets, and they sponsored people to go in there and run for them, right? Now, if they if they win it, I'm getting a you know a decent a bit uh, amount of notice from the you know the major gun publications there and stuff. So they might get a little bit of free press there. What you do with that then? Okay, so say you got mentioned in you know uh, combat handguns, fantastic. You take that, you then post that on your Facebook page. You drive traffic to that. 
you give them a shout out. Maybe they, you know, maybe they retweet your article for you or something like that. So creating the publicity, as long as their marketing teams understand how to use, and you know, I run a marketing gig, right? As long as they understand how to use this stuff when it's created, there's a big potential for almost every player in Florida to do something with this. Whether you're a manufacturer, your gun shop, your police department, it really doesn't matter, right? The content, this is going to be a massive content generator for everybody involved. That's how I set it up. It has a massive marketing bonanza for, for just about everybody. And then obviously for mass appeal for viewers so that we can scale it out, start getting the viewership up there, and then, you know, and eventually turn it into some kind of a regional competition with one final one, hopefully host it on at least, you know, some kind of a minor television network type thing. That sounds freaking fun. I think we need Kurt Gruber to go shoot it. The zombies would be like, wow, I'm not getting close to that. <laughs> the beard. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of busy that weekend. Yeah, it's <laughs> I, I wanted to get some of you guys down there for it, but I'll be honest. I, like I said, this thing has taken on a life of its own, and I've really only had the right. time between everybody to put in like a phone right. call. Maybe I hear back, maybe I don't, and then it's on to the next one. Right. Yeah, plus plus that same weekend is the Texas Three Gun Championship and the uh, USPSA Multi Gun Nationals. Yeah, there's. I tried to find a weekend in the spring because this is the thing. A, we I started putting this concept together at the end of December. Okay, I mean, <clears throat> we have moved really quick with this thing. Like when I was talking to the guys at Five Eleven, they were like, "Well, that sounds really cool. When are you doing it?" I said, "We're doing it in April." He goes, "Okay, cool. April 2016." Well, I go, "No, man, two months." We're doing it in April, and he's like, "Okay, well, that's completely uh, unrealistic." So, but the thing is, I couldn't, I couldn't push it off because it just gets too freaking hot in Florida. Right. So, oh no. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, that's the same reason why the our Texas Three Gun Championship is next weekend. Same way because in a month in Texas it'll be 110 degrees. Right. Exactly. So you know, you kind of do the best with what you got and. I was just—I'm just a big fan of when you put something like this together. Schedule it tight to force yourself to go through with it. Because if I scheduled it a year out, chances are something would have come about. It would have got put on the back burner, and then it's just another great idea that, that never gets executed on, right? So that's kind of—I I like doing things like that, and it, it right. makes me sick. There's a lot of people ready to kill me that work with me at this point, okay? But right. you know, <laughs> it's, it's happening though. We'll be happy it's done when it's done. So. Yeah, our big difference is we've uh, we've been taking uh, applications since the first of November. So uh, right when our, when our registration opened. Right. So. Yeah. I think me and Steve, me and Steve might be able to get out to this thing. Uh, how are you feeling oh, about that? I'm gonna definitely try and get out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come and do some live stream from there and have a show there, and then you know your fans can come out there and actually meet you and stuff too, man. You know. So we need to set up something big for next year then. If, if it wasn't eight hours away from me here, I would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, 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 let's see if me and Steve can make it out there. Like I said, guys, I think you want to fill these 10 spots or that they have left because if you think about it, 50 shooters, 10 rifles, EOTex, you know, not to be the greedy guy, but I mean. That's a pretty, pretty, pretty solid, uh, yeah, pretty solid odds there. Well, when, we were, when, I was, when I was putting it together, you know, I was talking to a, a bunch of guys that were sponsored guys, and I say, so what's so what's the deal? You know, like, what are you looking for? And, and a lot of them came back and they said, well, guys, when they have so many matches that they can go to, they want to know, you know, well, what's in it for me if I do well? And I said, okay, so we got to build up the prize table. So that's what we did. But, Anthony, you're supposed to be running this thing. You're going to be running it, right? <laughs> Uh, I have plans to get up there. I know the hotel's like nearest hotel I found was like 25 minutes away. Yeah, but, there's there's yeah. not too many. Manatee Gun Club is a really cool place, and it's set up perfectly for this because if you go onto the website and you look at the map, the it, it there's a there's the the thousand yard range is right there, but then there's the side road that kind of goes off and curves around with all the side ranges right along it. So I mean, it's set up perfectly for this stuff. But no, you're right, it is. It is out in the middle, middle of nowhere. freaking nowhere, you know. That's what I figured. <laughs> I can tell by searching for hotels, like the nearest one was like 30 <laughs> yeah. minutes away. Gonna, I'm like, yeah, this is in the sticks. Set up a, gonna have to set up like a camping village or something. Well, they've got they've got all the camper hookups there, all the electricity and the water hookups and all that stuff. So 
if you want to come out and rough. But but honestly, that's kind of the cool. That's where we lucked out with this, and that it's not like you're not showing up at nine and staying all day if you don't want, right? I'm letting everybody know ahead of time where they're slotted at. So if you just want to come and hang out for you know a couple hours, do your run, watch a couple other people, and bounce. You can do that, and you're not going to miss out on anything in your own participation. You know, so. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing the hotel. I'm going back home and sleeping in my bed afterwards. Okay, so <laughs> it, it it does definitely sound like a, uh, a for sure like the zombie race is a 5K thing. So you definitely took a, a good script from that and kind of just threw the guns into it. So definitely sounds fun. Hopefully it uh, works out, and maybe I can try to get my ass down to Florida. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna we're gonna do another one probably right around Halloween because this kind of goes hand in hand with that, and um. We're gonna to try to do another one around Halloween. Put it that way. We're gonna get through this one first, and then we'll, you know, put it this way. Once I get done with this, and I get this video done, so that people can actually see what it is that I'm talking about, I'm gonna sell them. I'm gonna sell them out like that next time. It won't even be. It won't even be a question. It, I mean, the amount of people that are calling me, they're like, "Well, I don't understand this. Well, what do I do with that? Well, you know, what I mean, it's just, it's just there's, it's different. And when it's different, and you don't have the money to put into the advertising. It is just a lot of explaining and a lot of confusion, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just to clarify, we got a couple more minutes on this topic that we can hit here. Um, there isn't going to be squads, so that was an interesting question that we talked in the free chat. So yep. 50 people are kind of going to like, almost like, you know, be lined up, ready to go. And as that initial shooter gets onto like stage five, they'll let the other one go ahead and run that course. This is one continuous course. That you're running. I don't know if you're you're crawling through guts and goop to get to the to the rifle stage or to, to the pistol stage. So it's pretty. I mean, you know, I can imagine the the photos and and the video crew. It's going to be pretty epic seeing everybody's 5.11s just completely smeared in, in mud or whatever you got. <laughs> well, I mean, put it put it this way. I'm going to have my production crews down there, right, with with three rolling cameras, two drone cameras, and then GoPros on all the shooters. Okay. So, wow. you know, what I'm telling people, what I've been telling them is go get go get somebody that's a company, some company to sponsor you to go to this thing. Now, the sponsored shooters understand that that's how it works, right? Everybody else doesn't kind of, you know, grasp that aspect of things. But, I mean, that's where the opportunity is, and then they get their logo out there. Now, if you're just a guy that, you know, love, you know, if you, you just love me some me, right, and you want all that footage for yourself, I mean, why not, you know? So... It's uh, it's 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 going to be different. It's it's going to be really intense. And if anybody's seen American Ninja Warrior, right, that's kind of the <laughs> setup that this is modeled after, right? Where it's one guy running at a time, all eyes on you, type thing. And like I said, we're <laughs> we're making this for television production, you know. So that's the model we're pursuing with this. And you know, the first one, it's it'll be a little rocky, and we'll we'll perfect it as we go, but. You know, it's de it's definitely going to be cool. It's definitely going to be different. And if you ever thought about doing something like this, by all means, come hop on board with this thing because I mean, you never there, there might not be another one. Okay, who knows? There you go. So we have uh, Ghost Warriors asking. It's outbreakshootout.com is the website, and the dates again are April 25th and April 26th for this event. So I know most a lot of the CZ guys are in the Florida area. This might be an event. To maybe even sponsor, you know, this is the guy right here. If you guys wanted to get in on that, or if you guys just wanted to attend and see some of your shooters go out there, uh, this is a good opportunity yeah. for them. CZ Forum guys. We're, we're we're pretty much sponsored up at this point, but I am looking forward to to getting everything done and showcasing honestly to the industry as a whole what we did for the sponsors with this. You know, here's the amount of content that we generated. Here's the amount of testimonials that we generated. Here is all the visuals, the pictures. I mean, the pictures of, of shooters and military guys and stuff with your weapon, with the zombies all next to them, real photo shoots. I mean, just massive content. And, you know, just so people know, too, it's the 25th and the 26th, but you're only shooting one of those two days, okay? <laughs> so when you go to sign up, if you buy a ticket online or you want to call me and get it, we got them for sale at some local gun shops, too. Um you know, just let them know if it has to be one of those two days. Otherwise, we just slot you uh, ahead of time if it doesn't matter. So, yeah, very nice. Uh, I think we kind of covered it there, man. I look forward to attending that. 
it seems like Schwell 11 is in the Q&A, and he says he will be covering that event. So if we know, we know Schwell... <laughs> yeah, we know Shell Swell pretty well, and he has like a book bag full of video recording equipment. Nice. So yeah, yeah anybody be... that's a photographer or video guy or whatever, you want to come out and get some of this stuff and do something with it, by all means, come on out. You know, like, uh, um, I like a one a one man video crew himself. An army of um, women, awesome. Yeah, he said, Dustin and Kurt, you have to come. Kurt's doing the Texas Three Gun. And Dustin, I don't know. I don't know if Dustin's going to come down here on a short notice to do this. A little late. Schwell, you can come fly and pick me up in your Schwell helicopter. The Schwell mobile. Schwell mobile. Yeah. All right. So let's move on here. Let's move on to the NRA show. The the NRA show was in Nashville, Tennessee, which is an awesome state that I've happened to visit a couple times here. Um, it was like, what was it like last weekend or that's when it was last week? Yeah. Friday, uh, Saturday, yep. Sunday. Okay, so Dustin, Danny, Jeremy, and Kelly were all at this event. Uh, Kurt couldn't make it. I just, me and Steve decided to shoot Area 6 USPSA, uh, which happened to be a shit show match for me for multiple reasons, but we won't get into that because that could take us <laughs> some time. But uh, I kind of hope that we, I kind of hope I chose NRA, but you can never you can never tell how the match is going to swing. But what did you guys think about the venue and what one product that was released that really caught your attention? I don't know, Danny, you want to hit this? Yeah. Um, I mean, I thought the venue was good. I thought how everything was set up was really nice. They had, like, a whole outdoor area set up that was nice. The weather was good. Uh, Nashville itself is great. It's only about two hours from me, so... You know, I'm liking these little Midwest NRA conventions. Next year it's going to be in Louisville, and that's even closer, so it's a good deal. Um, as far as new products, I mean, there's just so much. I don't really know what to say was, like, my one thing that, you know, I, I there were multiple things that I want to get. I would spend all my money that I had on this if I just went around, you know, and buying everything I wanted, but... There's just a lot of cool stuff, and I really suggest to anyone who can make it out to one of these conventions. If you haven't been, I really suggest going. It's a great time. There you go. Dustin, you have anything uh, that kind of jumps in your mind on, about the NRA show? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I agree. The outside venue was, was pretty cool. They had uh, two, two or three um, concert stages going. Uh, one of the nights they had a free concert uh with uh, Hank Jr. playing on the stage and several of uh, country uh, you know, music artists out there doing their thing. Uh, several booths inside actually had acoustic like sets going on, so that was kind of cool. Um, I will say, I guess the one negative thing was that it was definitely a smaller venue inside the, uh, the, like the arena or stadium or whatever hall that they had versus Indy. Houston and St. Louis before that. I think from St. Louis, obviously I'm a little partial there, but uh, from then on, it, it seemed like it was growing and growing and growing and bigger. Now, not saying that the the attendance wasn't more. There was a shit ton of people there. I mean, it was packed. Uh, the booth, uh, I think, spaces were cut down, and and the amount of companies. I know definitely there was a few companies, big name companies, that weren't there or just didn't really have a have a very much Spot. presence there, so yeah. Um, but all in all, I think it ran pretty well. Uh, I think everybody was super nice. Obviously, it's it's Tennessee, so it's the Southern hospitality. So I love uh, love barbecue and sweet tea. So there's definitely a lot of that right off the main strip. You know, you're a block away from downtown. You know, Nashville, all the honky tonks and and all the nice <laughs> restaurants there. So um, yeah, yeah, it was pretty nice. Kelly, there's anything that stuck out in your head? I told, did you get a chance to take out uh, that Trigicon AccuPoint 1x6 that they released? Yeah, I did. It was really, really nice. Really, really nice. Still kind of out of my price range, but after going to the Vortex booth and, and looking at the one Strike Eagle that they had there, you know, that everybody yeah. wanted to look at a shot, and then having the guy tell me that maybe November is when they're going to be out. I'm like, dude, never mind. I don't even want to look at it anymore. It's like, I don't know the question for the season, so I don't even want to look at it if I can't have it until, you know, November when there'll be a foot of snow on the ground and it's 
useless to me. <laughs> so, yeah. But Do yeah, you... I I thought it was a good show. Nashville's just that downtown area is not made for seventy five thousand people. It's the largest convention they've ever had down there, so parking is non existent. And by building that building that the convention was in, they lost an extreme amount of parking. So when that building went up, everybody cringed because they're like, our parking spots are gone. Um, so parking was an issue if you didn't get there in a timely manner. Um, but the building the building's little, great. Uh, <clears throat> after the first, first day, we parked at the stadium. And then after that, I found some sneaky little behind, like, alley like pay ten dollars to a dude and I could park yep. there for all day. So <laughs> I did that. You see that? So <laughs> one of the guys that was running all those lots owned the Quiznos and was like totally running a racket on parking. Yep. That's hilarious. That's, That's probably it. who the one of the guys was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but That's I thought the show idea. was good. Like there was there was a few, you know, big name um companies that weren't represented there, but you know, if they didn't think that it would be valuable to them. I understand because I'm I'm sure it's not cheap. But um, yeah, there's some cool stuff. I did not go see the single stack block. I really didn't. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, they kind of they kind of beat that horse to death almost <laughs> on the hype right. and the follow up and yeah, all the leaked information. Still is well, saying, I still well, think my favorite uh, pistol is going to be the Canic. TPSA or whatever they call it from uh, Century Arms. It's a Turkish pistol. I I shot it um, whenever I was at Big Three, and I think it was an awesome little pistol. The only thing I would change were the sights, which are no big deal, but the trigger was just amazing for an out of the box pistol. And it's going to be, you know, I think MSRP is three ninety nine, so you know it's going to be cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I still I'm going to stick with that being my favorite thing there. And and Century Arms has got some awesome. American-made AKs, and uh, yeah, I think that was my favorite. Everything else I kind of saw it shot, so spoiled in in that way. Well, they I guess. have the uh, one thing that I saw that was pretty neat was the uh, the new FN, I guess, civilian issue scar. So pretty much, uh, they changed a few things on the scar rifle, and or I'm not on the scar on the saw. I'm sorry, saw rifle. Oh yeah, uh, and. Uh, so they, they had that changed out. I saw Larry at FN, and uh, he kind of showed me a few things on that guy. And pretty interesting that because <laughs> everybody the, needs know. a saw. <laughs> the the, the, the semi-automatic squad automatic weapon. <laughs> right. But, yeah. Pretty uh, much. Yeah. Uh, takes a nut sack and everything, so it's, it's <laughs> the the belt fed, for the belt fed division. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. We got to have a new new uh new squad. Everybody wants to build. Uh, whether it's semi or not, everybody wants one of those. So. That, and then I know uh, I was in the X Products booth and we debuted uh, the net launcher and the uh, grappling hook for the can launcher that they have. <laughs> so uh, those will be hitting out soon. And they completely sold out of uh, can launchers the second day, and then by the morning of, they sold out all of the 9 millimeter. And the uh, five five six two two three cans or the um, uh, drums, mm -hmm. and then on the third day they sold out of uh, the three hundred eight drums. So everybody got uh, some high capacity on their uh, get goodie bag coming out of there. So that was pretty cool. Um, what other goodies? Yeah, the uh, the Springfield booth was small, and then it was right next to like literally this close to the Glock booth. Uh, right. So <laughs> when they're when the crowds came in, and then when, especially when Gunny was there, which I got to meet him, and he's actually a pretty cool dude. My my, my camera's falling down here. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was actually a really nice guy. But when he was there, that man uh, is a is a champion. He was there from like one to five or one to six, and he mm -hmm. did not take any breaks. He didn't do anything. He actually talked to you like you're a human being, and took the time, you know, to shake your hand, take a photo, sign an autograph, or whatever. Uh, and when the crowds were in there, it completely filled that whole like block between Springfield and, and Glock. It was just nuts. I think but. of all the pictures I saw from the NRA show, my favorite was Kelly's nephew and uh, Uncle Ted. Oh, oh my goodness. 
Yes, I that, It was so crazy. I mean, you know how people get in big groups. They're stupid, and they don't care if there's children around. And, and thankfully, both of my nephews are polite young men. So, you know, n not even with, like, the Ted thing, but any time they wanted to see something, you know, they're taught to wait your turn. So somebody would be looking at something, and, you know, they'd wait until the guy moved out of the way. Well, then some other guy would jump in there in front of children. And I'm like, you know, oh, yeah. I know you're going to have to be polite, but if you want to see something, we're just going to have to jump in there. So that was, like, the one time where I tell them it's okay to kind of be impolite and just get up there and to see it. <laughs> but, you know, that's the only thing. You kind of have to, like, hold back and, you know, try not to be irate and, and take some tactical Timmy out because they're stepping in front of them, but... Right. But yeah, the Uncle Ted thing was yeah, pretty awesome. A winner. I don't know. I think I would have failed right there because I would have been like, "Yo, the kids, get out of the way." Yeah, I yeah. Know. Yeah, I took my you, daughter, you and there's definitely some. For yeah, there's definitely mind. some people who uh, who who kind of got on my last nerves, and there was definitely uh, a few that Sagan I thought was going to stab. So <laughs> she, you know, she jumps. Know. She jumps the gun faster than. Than dad here, so. <laughs> yeah, and NRA convention has always been kind of uh, typical for that because it's the completely opposite crowd as the shot show. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, uh, Kurt, I got to lead up to this question because when the Trigicon they released their reticles, obviously I think the AccuPoint one to four has great glass and it was really quick, but a lot of guys complained about the reticle being that post triangle type of deal and obviously the price point was you know around a thousand you can find them for around 700 depending on what reticle but now they released like six different reticles but now people are complaining that there's no true BDC so what are your thoughts on the reticles did you get a chance to see them? I haven't seen their scopes uh, I, you know obviously I wasn't there this year um, I don't like BDC so that wouldn't be something I would complain about so it won't um, be a deal breaker for you alright no no I'm a I'm a first focal plane mill mill guy. I don't. I I want to be able to just plug in the my uh, muzzle velocities into my iPhone and have it tell me what my drop is in mills and and go. So there it is. So there we have it. Uh, we can. I don't know. We can. Do we even want to go to the Glock 42? I don't think there's. You know. Whatever. Uh, it's you know. I'm a it, it's smaller than Smith <laughs> Smith and Wesson Shield and it has less of less of a round capacity. Next. There you go. I mean, it's <laughs> swing and a miss. Yeah, the. I mean, I'm a Glock fan, oh, obviously, get, but it's just like the information's your, been out there for so long. Just get your S and call it good. Shazam! Yeah. Look at that. I mean, if you're yeah, into Springfield, except it still has a grip grip safety, so it still fails. <laughs> well, if you're just some kind of girl and can't grip your gun correctly, I mean, I'll show you. I'll show you, Kurt. It's it's okay. Right, right. We'll take it slow, uh, buddy. <laughs> I'll be gentle. I'll be gentle. Hey, Dustin, let I'll me step on you. you. Hey, Dustin, <laughs> let me step step on your hand first, and then we'll see how good you grip that grip safety. <laughs> that's a that's a good point of point of uh that he brought up there, though. Not, you know, but that'll take a while. But let's right. uh, let's move on here. I think there was. Uh, Let's move quickly onto the discount corner, and then we can hit that one more topic well, regarding let me, let me the. Just, let me just say the one thing that I saw there that I thought honestly was pretty cool from a marketing perspective, if you if you got a second, is American Tactical has a new composite lower that they made, and they made it clear. It's completely clear, right? Which I saw that, like the whole Glock thing that they were trying to put, I was like, well, what? I, I just don't, I don't get it. What's, you know what I mean? That's, what's the big deal here? But that, I thought, was actually something that was actually unique and different and actually worth kind of doing a rollout for. So that I thought was something that was kind of cool. I don't know if it's like too gimmicky or whatever, but they said they drove over that composite with like big trucks and stuff and all sorts of stuff, and it will bend, but it won't break. And this one was this one's clear. I thought that was kind of cool. So hmm. I don't know your clear AR lower ghost gun type of deal. Yeah. Uh, know, does guess. anybody else make something like that? Not that I've seen. Not, I, don't, uh, yeah. I don't think. I think clear. there was one more. Yeah, I, I think there was one more, but it was weird. I don't. I don't. Usually, uh, it's just for show, you know, so you can yeah. see. Yeah, like the, the skeletonized ones that you yeah. 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 There's, there's. I mean, there's a couple of guys out there that have gone 
you know, full retard with their mill that are they're running around with skeletonized lowers that they made <laughs> themselves, but I don't think there's anybody that's actually marketing them and selling them. Ah. Huh. So, Kurt, this uh, Texas three-gun match, uh, you know, you're uh, uh, involved in this. Tell us a little bit about that. Is there any slots left to shoot that match? Uh, there sure is. Uh, as of today, I think we had 212 uh, uh, shooters signed up for the match. Uh, so we've got a few more slots available. Um, it's going to be a pretty awesome match. Uh, been working on it all weekend. Last weekend was actually out at the range setting up stages in natural terrain after work before the show today. Um, so we're going to have uh, f five really awesome natural terrain stages, one long range stage, and then four base stages uh, with a pretty high round count. Uh, the latest round count when you when you take an option targets to into account, you know, basically counting both your pistol and shotgun rounds in the in the count is. 171 rounds of rifle, 202 rounds of, or sorry, 171 pistol, 202 rifle, 162 birdshot, and nine slugs, over 10 stages. You would do um, slugs in there, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, <laughs> right. We got some hundred yard slugs, baby. And slug, sh slug shooting is fun. It's, it's big. It's big target. So, uh, um, but. It's been been a lot of work. We're having a lot of, you know, working up to the match, which is uh, next weekend, the 24th to the 26th of April. Uh, Extreme Bullets is our title sponsor for the match, um, and Jansen and Rudy and the guys at Extreme Bullets have stepped up huge to uh, support us. Um, you know, we got really strong support from Benelli, Adams Arms. We have a pretty big list of sponsors. Um, Rubber City, Armory, you know, Black Match Ride the World as, is a stage sponsor. Um, <laughs> Uh, so we're uh, uh, Hayes Custom Guns, a lot of the local guys here, so uh, it's going to be a great match. Uh, I'm kind of in the same position that Jeremy's in, that I'm almost about ready, going to be really glad when it's over. <laughs> um, but that's because I sat down and did the math the other day, and between collecting sponsors and uh, work on stage designs and work on everything. I probably have about 220 hours in, involved in this match already, and still have another week and a half to go. Um, and I know at least two, at least two of the days leading up to it will be full time on the range, uh, mowing, setting stages, uh, and then you know five days full time on the range shooting. Um, so, and then in that, you know, I've still got a family to take care of, got a full time job to take care of, and then got a you know, work on my own shooting, um, you know, working on heavy, shooting heavy this year, and you know, heavy drop, might as well get a three three oh eight and shoot some heavy, heavy rifle. <laughs> um, so the new Adams Arms 308, I'm having a lot of fun with it, working on uh, developing some really hardcore, great loads for it right now. Um, guys at Hayes Custom Guns are building me a new 6-inch uh, 45 2011 uh, to shoot... Uh, heavy with, so uh, it's going to be a fun year. Um, it's going to be a lot more just practicing and getting uh, spun up between my match next weekend and then probably the next big match I'll be shooting will be Pro-Am. So. Very nice. And where can um, we go to, to sign up for this match if you guys are in the surrounding Texas area? All right. So uh, th threegunchampionship.com is the website for the match. The uh, or, uh, sign up form is on there, um, as well as all the stage designs, uh, sponsor info. Uh, we're also, of course, on Facebook, uh, Extreme Extreme Bullets Texas Three Gun Championship. Um, or you can just reach out to me either at my personal page or my shooter page, which is facebook.com slash three gunner, three G U N N E R, or just three gunner.com, which is three G U N N R.com. There you go. So multiple ways to get in that. So if we're in the Florida surrounding states, we want to hit up the zombie match, the, the outbreak shootout. If you're in the Texas area, go check out that uh, three-gun match that uh, Kurt's putting on. Be prepared to, you know, bring a lot of ammo. Hopefully you don't have to fly out there, man. That's the, only thing, that's the, thing, that, that's the thing that I... I know well, a lot of people lot. are flying for it. I know tons of yeah, people we are. Well, we, we have guys flying in from as far as Alaska. Um... We started so getting, shipping all your ammo, we, obviously. Yeah, we, we we started getting shipments of ammo showing up at the clubhouse about a week ago. Um, oh, there you go. So. There you go. <laughs> very very nice. So we got a lot of things going on for next weekend. 
So we got a. Uh, I mean, I'm 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 looking forward to that uh, outbreak shootout stuff since it's in my home state. We're gonna try to not gas out t- before two stages in on this one. Right. You know, that, that's the goal. To hold, you know. Well, you know cause and, I, he said there's a long run back. You know, right. so you can you could be with those guys like bystanding. Look at this dude who barely make it. You know, you know, I'm yeah, sure there's gonna yeah. be a lot of dudes left. Well, I will tell you that my match is obviously going to be a lot more fat guy friendly because, well, I'm a fat guy, and uh, <laughs> uh, so in my match, it's, it's going to be a lot more uh, shooting challenging than uh, exercising challenging. So uh, yeah. a lot more interesting state target presentations, awkward shooting positions. Uh, how fast you can run is going to have not much to do because there isn't much movement where you aren't shooting your gun. There you go. Very nice. Um, what do we have here? We have um, we were going to hit the discount corner stuff. I know Dustin, you had some stuff you wanted to add in there. Well, you want to just go ahead and kick it off with the discount corner you got? Yeah, I know uh, Springfield was running a deal, and they told me to keep running it. So uh, if you go to Springfield's website, uh, Springfield-Armory.com, and go to uh, the shop. Any uh, any products that you put in there, uh, you'll be good till May 31st. Type in NRA 2015, so NRA2015, and you get 15% off. So get your uh, essay fix there. Um, and then contact me if you're uh, needing a nice little discount on the following Animal Customs, or if you were actually at the show and I got a photo with you or you took a photo with me, uh, make sure you shoot me uh, that photo on my fan page, just Dustin Pluth. Uh, you'll see me shooting a gun and stuff on my profile. Uh, and you'll get your nice little discount on that. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, H&M Black Nitride and X Products. They were running uh, some nice little discounts at the NRA show, and they said to keep them going for me. So you might get some, uh, some percentage off if you're looking to get something nice Black Nitrided and be one of the cool kids. Black Nitride in the world. Uh, you know, I need to join that. Black on, black, on black mags, you know, just just cool things like that. Hashtag Black Nitride uh, the world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we take over the internet. Yes, uh, and then, yeah, X Products doing some drums and some cans. I can't wait to get my 9mm uh, side charger uh, AR that's coming in soon and uh, going to be doing some fun stuff with that. So... Those are uh, the discounts that I have as of right now. Right, Maybe Tactical did that too. They have um, um, there was a gentleman who came in on Sunday and bought the rest of the booth, so they literally had to like tell everybody to quit buying things and packed it all up and covered it up with sheets and said sorry. Some guy just bought everything, um, so they have too. If you go to majorsurplus.com, if you use NRA 2015, it's 15 percent off until the end of May. I believe. So if, if you got turned away on Sunday because some did, guy bought everything then. I did see that. I thought they were just closing up early and I was like, dude, those guys are taken out. <laughs> but uh, apparently I didn't know they, <laughs> they got bought right. out. That was funny. Actually, yeah. another funny some thing was, uh, did you see uh, Charter Arms' booth? Or oh, the lack thereof? Were uh, yellow, <laughs> yellow, yellow freight <laughs> lost their guns? Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the freight company that was shipping in all of their firearms for the display, and I mean we're talking old school, you know, historical firearms to all their brand new product line lost everything, and uh, uh, they pretty much were like, "Sorry about you." So they had a sign that it was, uh, "Sorry for the inconvenience, uh, Yellow Freight has lost all of our products." And but the funny um, thing is, they actually spelled yeah. freight wrong. So. <laughs> They, they really. I <laughs> so it was like a it, double you know, fail. You read things. <laughs> it was like double <laughs> fail. <laughs> yeah. You should have took a photo of that, man. That, that, that could have been. Yeah. And Blade Tech. Right there, Blade Tech. Their booth got uh, marked with empty stickers. Their crates got marked with empty stickers. So the uh, people who were moving crates moved it to a big room with all the other empty crates, and it was not found. So all they had were like a couple banners. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I did. I did go by there because they do have uh, animal banners and and tablecloths. They had all those up, but yeah, they had like right. three holsters on. The, I think it was like their guys' personal holsters. I'm pretty uh-huh. sure that were on the table, and I was like, oh, 
what's going on, guys? <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. The organization was not the greatest. Yeah, uh, and that was that's uh, only two of the you know how many ever hundreds right. of booths that were there, and, right. and there was definitely uh, some other people that were like, yeah, this didn't show up, or uh, yeah, we're still oh tomorrow it'll be here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah. Is it working? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, finish up this uh, discount corner stuff real quick. Tacticallife.net. That's TSM10. Gives you 10% off of T-shirts, scripts, and stickers over at Tacticallife.net. Fort Mill Munitions. TeamFMM.com. If you're looking for any pistol ammunition, use yeah, Randall. And you get 5% off there. Kelly has a discount also over there. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, Dewey rods. Steve just put out a video on his Dewey rod pistol kit, which is a good video. Um, so if you guys are interested in that, DeweyRods.com, Cruise Rod 10. Jump, you know, jump on a Cruise Rod. Make sure you put, <laughs> make sure you put that in a discount code, ten percent off anything at Dewey Rods. Uh, Standard Deviation Arms, TSM5. They have Dawson Precision Base Pads, a lot of gun accessories. And if you give uh, Terran Tactical Innovations an email or a call, and say the Shooter's Mindset sent you, you get ten percent off anything over at Terran Tactical Innovations. So. There it is. Discount corner for me. Try to rush through that one. Anything else you guys want to throw out as far as discounts? Jeremy, you got any discounts for Grizzly I, or Outbreak? I didn't have a chance to go in there and do that. Um, if I can come back on the show at some time, I'll, I'll bring a ton of different <laughs> coupon codes and different stuff. So, um, But, yeah, no, I'm batting a zero on that one today. <laughs> I got one I can throw in real quick. It's not even for me, but... I'm going to help out a fellow CZ shooter. Um, AJ Hitch has got an extreme bullets code going right now. And I'm not sure on the percentage, but the code is AH2015XB. So if you need bullets, head over to Extreme. Use her code. Help out a CZ shooter. There you go. Um, if you're looking for a discount on Adam's Arms products or Voodoo Innovations products, hit me up on my uh, shooter page. There you go. So damn, a lot of discounts, a lot of discounts <laughs> coming on today, man. You know, I mean, if you're looking to buy anything, just send us an email, and we'll get we'll get you hit on today. Somebody probably knows. You have, you have any Q and A, Dustin? Um, yeah, there was uh, one from Joshua about the NRA show. He said, uh, what was the best meal you guys had there? So, since it is Nashville. Um, Jolly Barbecue. Who's that? I was going to say, we went to uh, Rodizio Brazilian Steakhouse. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Was good. There's like a little wooden thing on your table, and it's half red and half green. And when you turn it to the green side, these guys just walk around and give you a bunch of meat. And they had a bowl of bacon on the buffet. Heaven. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's my daughter's favorite place. There's a there's a one here in St. Louis, and she's like, "Daddy, can we go to the place that has the green and red thing?" Yes. I'm like, "Let's go, get the meat sweats." It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, so they had a bowl of bacon, just yes. all you can eat kind of bowl of bacon. Yeah, like a. So you picked bowl up the bacon. bowl and just took it back to the table, right? <laughs> Yeah, like, it crossed my mind. Mine. I, I, I've easily, easily eaten 50 to 60 dollars worth of filet at the Pogo de Chao in Austin before, so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah uh, actually, actually Pogo de Chao and is exactly the same, so. <laughs> I would say the, the best place I went to in, uh, in Nashville, there's a place right off of downtown. It's kind of right across from Tootsie's, which is a, like a honky tonk. It was a. Uh, Rippies? Yeah, Rippies I mean, for ribs. Not... <coughs> yeah, they had some pretty legit barbecue, and, and their sweet tea was legit. Uh, and then that Jack's, which is like right across the street from them, uh, they're pretty good. A little, uh, they have a little, they try to push you through the line pretty quick because they're they're definitely stacked up, but they have some pretty good food. So. You make <coughs> legit. You got my vote. All right, so Jeremy has created the hashtag of today's show, and it, obviously Dustin said it, and that's hashtag meat sweats. <laughs> <laughs> the hashtag. hashtag of the day. So uh, yeah, I don't let's know. Let's get hashtag meat sweats trending. 
Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We can do it. The coupon code for everybody when I come on next time. There you go. Yeah, if you go to, yeah. if you go to any of these matches, find Kurt or Jeremy and just say meat sweats. <laughs> you know, and you'll get you'll probably get like a you know something there. Get a picture with you. You'll get a giggle. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Ah, oh, man, that was pretty pretty good. Good call out on the meat sweats. <laughs> Dustin says the most random random shit in the world. I'm telling you, it, it never fails. <laughs> well, and Dustin, by the way, you're cut off from saying honky tonk anymore during this podcast. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. uh, honky tonk spots. Yeah. No honky tonk. And you don't have Florida. Such a disgusting visual, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. I know, I know what yeah. it's like too. I mean, it's just brutal. You just feel so disgusted with yourself at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so meat sweats and honky tonks, and then if you say tootsies and you live in a Florida area, that's not a restaurant, folks, down here. <laughs> well, like, uh, 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 I mean, you can uh, order food there. You can get some good wings, but it's not your. Do they have a restaurant. breakfast buffet? The, uh, I know you could go in there for breakfast. You know, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, <laughs> sir, but, you know, 24 hours. You might hours see seven. the B team there. Is that what you're talking about? You might see some, yeah. you know, some hashtag gunshot wounds, maybe? If you say hashtag meat sweats in that place, you could probably get, that's why I like a code and service. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Yeah, Could he give you a different oh. discount? This is, this, is going down. this is going the right way. Uh, okay, so another thing at the NRA show that was pretty cool, and, and they're a fan of, uh, of us here at the Shooter's Mindset, uh, Michael and his lovely wife uh, from uh, Key, Bar, Key Bar ran up and, uh, and it was like, hey, I know you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, they're like, yeah, we love the show. And so he hooked me up with, uh, it's, you can't really see it perfectly clear, but it's Hydro Dip. It's got some cool guns and... Uh, one of some of them assault rifles and some grenades and all kinds of cool stuff on it. But uh, i got to wait until I get my new house to get my house key, and then I'm going to put all my cool keys. It's, it's definitely like a uh, Swiss uh, you know, army knife, but for uh, keys. And he had one that had – you can still put knives and files. And he had a toothpick and a tweezer on his and a, uh, a junk drive and all kinds of cool stuff. But, yeah, you can click it on your belt. And so I'll, I'll have some photos and cool stuff coming out later on that guy. But – Thanks, Mike. He was a, he was a cool dude and a fan of the show. That's pretty. That's a pretty cool item and a pretty cool idea. I didn't know that that was out. So we got to we got to check that out. Keybar is it? What you know the website? We'll we'll get the website. Uh out. yeah, keybar.us. There you go. All right. Uh, quickly here, uh, episode eighty three giveaway announcement. This was for the Muneki show that we had last week. We had a hundred rounds of Fort Mill munitions handgun ammo. Two UM tactical holsters and some tactical life sure grips. The winners are uh, uh, Randy Williams and Jason Brenner. You guys are the winners of that giveaway, so send me a PM on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. If you guys don't reach out, I'll also post the winners over on the Shooter's Mindset just in case you missed the show today. You guys are the winner of that giveaway, so thanks for watching and thanks. When for will you post that? Will you post that tonight? Will you post that tomorrow? Do I need to well, remind hopefully you? Hopefully they're watching, and you, <laughs> you guys can just contact me now and save me from the post, man. <laughs> just do me the favor. So there you go, uh, uh, Jer Randy Williams and Jason. You guys are the winner of that giveaway. And quickly here, we, we're not going. We're going to skip the lightning round. There's too many of us, uh, but I think this is a little bit more important because we were talking about it. This NRA national permit gun laws deal. Who wants to kick this off? Do you guys believe in it? What's the deal here? I'll kick it off. Centralized power is always a freaking bad thing, okay? I don't care what it is. We have a very big problem with centralized power already in this country. And to simply create more of it, I don't care who's running it, who's ever running it, won't be running it forever. You're just creating, I mean, it's that's my take on it. You know, I mean, honestly. Don't so, Jeremy, me. if I say, if I'm saying, uh, I'm I'm from the government, I'm here to help. Those are, uh, those are, those are words yeah. that you don't want to hear, huh? Right. So. <laughs> the government doesn't fix anything; they break everything. Have you guys seen those the doormats that say "Come back with a warrant"? No. Yeah. I, no. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not a. I know we, we kind of in the pre chat, and I, I believe uh, that we're all from pretty good states for uh, firearms laws and concealed and carry laws and, and everything that, that ties in with those. And, and I believe we're all uh, very Second Amendment uh, supportive. I, I think we like guns. I don't think they're uh, icky or anything like that. Um, <laughs> and, and I know for sure, you know, 
Yeah, you know, Kurt's got one of them assault rifles with magazine assault clips. Assault rifles. So, uh, you know, I like drums and I like belt feds just like the next. Yeah, I like belt feds just like the next red-blooded American in honky tonks with meat sweats. Um, just had to tie in every word I can say. Uh, no, I'm definitely not for it uh, because I feel that I would lose something. I know there definitely would be states out there, you know, the the Communist Party of Illinois and uh, Republic of California and the, the nanny state of Illinois, uh, New York would gain. And, and, I'm, and I would be thankful for those people to gain their rights back as individuals. But I know Missouri, Florida, Arizona, Texas, Utah, all the great states that do have awesome laws, we would all be punished in some way or we would lose something of our rights. And uh, I'm definitely not for that. So I'm going to keep a hold of my Missouri uh, concealed and carry as long as I can. Yeah, any t anytime you try to make a any law one size fits all in this country, no size, no nothing fits everybody. It's like trying to tell people in who live in a farm in uh, Montana that they need the same leash law that somebody lives in, living in downtown Manhattan needs. Uh, yeah. It just doesn't it just doesn't fit. So you know the Tenth Amendment's there for a reason. Leave the states alone. That's kind of my position on it. Now, now all the states can recognize my Missouri CCW, and that just makes my life a lot easier. But so. that should be right. an agreement. <laughs> should, but it should be an agreement between the states, and the feds should not get involved. Exactly. Yeah. There's a bear. No, there's a bear. Okay. The uh, the thing is too with the NRA show there. You know, I mean they they were parading the speakers out there. You know, too, and I mean it's kind of all you know, a lot of your typical. Republican type speakers. Uh, the one guy who wasn't there was Rand, and you know they. Some people were saying that the NRA told him not to show up there because of his. He's he's always been a big endorsement of the National Association for Gun Rights, and they hammer away at the NRA pretty hard. And Cruz wasn't there either, was he? I'm not. Sh I'm not sure on that one. I don't know. I just yeah. I saw a few of them, and I was like, really? Like that's. <laughs> those why are they here? You know what I mean. So well, I'm pretty sure they had McCain, and and uh, I'm not. Yeah, right. no. Well, so so I will <laughs> say that the, if if we're going to get into kind of a discussion about the organ, different organizations, I will say that I'm I do have a problem with some of the guys that are talk, that talk bad about the NRA from the other organizations. Uh, the Dudley Brown guy kind of comes to mind um, because. Sure, the NRA hasn't supported everything that they probably should. I mean, if it wasn't for the NRA, the Hughes Amendment probably wouldn't exist. Um, but everything, most everything positive that's happened for us in Second Amendments, most everything we've been able to kill, most everything that you know, we've been able to make sure that we get to keep our rights has been the NRA, for the most part, driving the bus. Um, if you look at the magazine issue in Colorado, there's some, if you talk to some very uh, knowledgeable people who were very involved in that uh, fight in Colorado, that Dudley Brown guy actually made it worse and kind of is as much to blame as some of the Democrats for uh, the magazine ban, ban being implemented there. So, Well, let, let me ask you guys this, because I'll be honest, I'm not terribly versed in, in Second Amendment history, but it, at what point... In, in, in our history, did states, did the states, not the feds, did the states start telling people, you can't leave your home with your gun unless you get our permission first? Like when, what, what time in history, what years did these, did these, did these things start to take hold? You know, because I think that's probably when most, of, I mean, that had to have been the, the first, the first step in this whole thing. So like, like when did that even start happening? I don't, I don't know, you know? Yeah. Well, I just uh, I had a guy come into my range the, just last week, right before the NRA show, actually, and he's from uh, up north. I, I'm going to probably butcher it. I'm sure it was like Wisconsin or Minnesota or, or somewhere up north. And they legally cannot take their kids to the range uh, and, and, sh and teach them how to shoot until they're like 13 or something like that. Uh, my daughter's six, and she's got a single-shot bolt-action 22. So... Uh, you know that that does not fly in my household. Um, yeah, uh, I I don't think the government should tell me how to do anything besides good job and keep on keeping on. Right. 
Yeah, there was a story where I believe a young young girl with a pink twenty two bolt action saved her parents from being attacked. Yeah. And there's a this is a long this is a while ago, but the pink twenty two bolt action just comes to mind that story. She actually saved her family because uh, when she saw it, once once the once the guy saw it or the bad guy saw it, he just kind of like bolted out of there and stopped doing what he was doing. So. Interesting stuff. I'm not very, you know, we usually don't talk too much about the gun laws and topics and stuff like that on there, so that's not my forte, but uh, you guys pretty handled it pretty well there. Anything else? I think we can, if anything else, any Facebook stuff you want to hit, I think we can kind of run this one down. Let me uh, refresh. I'm good on q and on my section here. What do we have? That's that's good. No, no, no. Well, we, got, we got everything here. I, I, I would like to say one more thing before we go, if I could. Go ahead. Um, a, a group that I'm doing a little bit of work with right now is the Second Amendment Foundation. And they don't get as much, you know, publicity as, like, say, like the NRA does, right? But you guys should go to, I think it is saf.org. If you just Google Second Amendment Foundation and check that out, these guys are the real deal, okay? These guys will actually go out and sue the states, over laws. They they actually go past the talking and actually put things into action to do things. And they do it all the time and they've been doing it for a very long time. And they've done that more. They're doing more right now current legal stuff in different states probably than all of these other groups combined have ever done in their whole histories. Okay, So for everybody listening, that they're a really cool group. It's a really great group that's, that runs them. They've been around for a long time. Um, I think you, if you go there, it's like for ten dollars you can be a supporter. They'll send you like a couple of stickers or something too. It's you know it's 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 nothing major, but if anybody hasn't heard of them, they're they're a very interesting group. I would highly suggest going and checking them out. Yeah, and if we're th throwing out groups like that real quick, I know a few of y'all mentioned suppressors. That you got some suppressors coming. Uh, you should check out the NFA Freedom Alliance. Um, what that is is it's an organization that's going around to the states, uh, working with all the states on things like uh, making sure that the chief law enforcement officers will sign off on forms for NFA transfers, yeah. um, and pretty much everything NFA: short barrel rifles, silencers, machine guns. Nice. Good stuff. I think we can run this one down here. We're clear of all Q and A and Facebook stuff. So let's bring this one down to shout-outs, man. This is a fun show. I think we need to do these at least once a month. Now I think I'm going to aim towards that. But uh, Danny, what do you have as far as shout-outs on your end? Um, I want to give a shout-out to CZ Forum again. Um, everyone should go check it out, and you should start shooting CZs. And also, um, <laughs> Real Avid Tools is one of my new sponsors, and they have a new uh, AR-15 multi-tool out that's pretty badass, so check them out, too. There you go, short and sweet there. Dustin, what do you have? Um, as always, uh, Springfield Armor and Animal Customs. Uh, remember, if you guys saw me at uh, NRA show, hit me up, and you get your sweet discount on all that goodies. Uh, Taryn Tactical, Mr. Taryn Butler, happy to uh, work with that gentleman this season. Um, Contact holsters, some of the best holsters out there. Uh, GP2 Tactical and Dissident Arms. Hooking me up, and uh, they, uh, the Dissident Arms boys, might be on the uh, the next show here coming up soon. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Uh, there we go. <laughs> hashtag, uh, uh, hashtag Kami AKs. What's what's going what's going on? Yeah, there, make, let's sure, see, uh, make sure you ask Mike about t the TSA and his ammo for Superstition Mountain. That ought to be a fun conversation. Oh jeez, yeah, I know. <laughs> Mike and uh, Mike and Lane are some good dudes. They've been all over the country here, so. Uh, BBI Bullets, uh, hashtag Black Knight Tried the World. I actually just had a, a nice little package going out to uh, those gentlemen this uh, this morning. So some funny new goodies coming up soon. Uh, Pro Ears, X Products, I'm working with those guys a lot. There's going to be some big things coming out. Uh, Shooter Red USA, Mr. Greg Skaz, he was out at uh, NRA Yay, taking some photos. I and saw him. Yeah? Good to see you. <laughs> So um, I'm trying to get him uh, down from the the Michigan state. He lives somewhere up in this region. That's a <laughs> Michigan joke. They do this a lot. Um, S3F Solutions, check those guys out. Uh, Tula Ammunitions, I ran all this nice Perfecta, and uh, 
ran like a beast at the Costa class, which I know I got to get video out. People hit me up about it. So uh, make sure you hit me up on my uh, Facebook page. We're this close from giving away a uh, 9mm side charger upper and uh, maybe some other goodies. You might get some other swag on there. So uh, make sure you share my page and uh, hashtag meets with us. There you go. Honky tonk. There you go. Jeremy, what do you have shout outs? Let's talk about, you know, you have your obviously marketing company. Yeah, I've got my marketing company, which is HCHC Advertising. And I've had that for a while. That's That stands for half cool, half crazed. We toned it down to HCHC <laughs> after a little while. You know, you got to at least get your foot in the door, right? So, um, <laughs> so I've got that going on. But definitely, outbreakshootout.com if you want to shoot it. If you want to be a zombie too, come on down. But I want to definitely give a shout out to. GrizzlyTargets.com. Um, I'm working on redoing their site right now, so go and check that out. But they make really cool, really good, high-quality steel targets. They've got a really great brass operation they've got going right now, too. If anybody does some reloading or you know somebody that needs some good brass, I mean, they've got like four cam decks, about eight Dillons, and a couple ammo loads going all day long over there, 55-gallon drums and stuff all day long. And the, the target setup that they came out with is called Build Your Own Range, and it utilizes connector pieces with 2x4s that you slide these different AR500 targets onto. So it, you're kind of creating the contraptions as you go. It's very it's a high degree of customization. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. So you can check that out at grizzlytargets.com. There you go. Awesome stuff over there. Uh, <laughs> Kelly, what do you have as far as shout-outs? Um, I'm just going to shout-out to Atlas Defense. Um, which is uh, mm -hmm. Joe Mo's company, and thank them for the awesome ZK22 that um, they helped me get from my nephew for his birthday and for the suppressor that is on the way and I'll have, you know, in 3 to 6 to 12 years or whatever the ATF says it's okay. And um, to IWI for hooking me up with this Tavor. So by next week, it'll be Bullpup Madness in the Samsung residence, and and uh, I'll try to get some stuff up on Facebook about it and stuff. It's going to be fun. Thank goodness the weather is nice now. There you go. Uh, Rand this just in. Randy Williams has sent me a PM and has already claimed his. So Jason, <laughs> all I need is you, <laughs> and I can just avoid the post all around. So. Oh no! Awesome. Um, Kurt, you're up. What do you got as far as shout outs? Talk about that Adam's arm stuff, man. Yep. Adam's Arms, of course, best rifles you can buy. Go piston or go home. Uh, U.S. <laughs> optics, uh, of course, some of the best optics that you can buy. Um, Hayes Custom Guns, building the nicest custom 2011s, custom Glocks, um, shotguns, pretty much anything you want. Aaron and Ben can build for you. Um, Voodoo Innovations, uh, Blade Tech, Italian Gun Grease, uh, Tactical Shit. TJ and the guys at Tacto Shit are doing a lot of cool stuff. I have a uh, one of their cool triggers that I did my a lot of fun with. Uh, Rubber City Armory, H&M, hashtag Black Knight Tried the World. Uh, mm -hmm. got the, my new Coming 45, numbers. my new six six inch 45 that I'm gonna have to send over there pretty soon to get Black Knight tried it. Uh, 3M Peltor, some hooking me up for really awesome uh, uh, <clears throat> ear pro. Uh, Horus Vision, you know, Horus, they, that's pretty much the reticle system that I use on everything, whether it's three-gun or precision rifle. Uh, X-Rail for all the cool shotgun products. And then Heligunner, um, Heligunner.com, if you ever want to shoot some hogs out of a little bird on 100,000 acres in Central Texas, <laughs> give me a holler. And uh, yeah. we can... That always just sounds like a good time. Who doesn't <laughs> want to do that? Yeah. Uh, like, who doesn't want to do that? You know, but, I mean, for a nominal fee, we can arrange it. <laughs> <laughs> Go fund me. Want to shoot pigs from helicopter? Yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah. Right. There you Kickstarter. Go. Here we go. Let's go. Go fund me. We'll want to shoot pigs on 100,000 acres with a M240 Bravo out the side of a little bird. Yeah. Done and done. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And there, uh, Steve, I think we're good enough to move on to you. What's going on there? Um, just obviously, of course, ZZForum.com. That's so awesome. That. I'm so excited for you. Thank you, thank you. Um, of course, George over at Weapon Shield. 
big supporter of the sport, supporter of me and several other shooters. So check him out. I would never leave out Terran Butler or Terran Tactical Innovations. Of course, Blade Tech. I've always run Blade Tech now for quite a long time. So that's pretty much it, man. Good stuff. Yeah, quickly, me, uh, Rainier Ballistics for your for your projectiles. Uh, Dewey Rods, want to give a big shout-out to them and their support. Grand TLP, uh, Terran Tactical Innovations, we're a big fan. Um, I got the Stoger M3000 TTI edition. Um, he, that, that is that is full-on project now. Um, they were touring around with it. Mine was like the first one. They were kind of doing all their he magic started. to it. Yeah, they... they <laughs> But they weren't sure if they wanted to make it a viable package. So now, if you if you want your stuff modded by TTI, that's a Stoger. He was only doing Benelli's. Now you can get it done by TTI. So check him out. Tell him I sent you 10% off. It'll help a little bit there. And that's gonna do it. I'm gonna wrap it up right there. Thanks to Jennifer Seymour. She hasn't. She uh, I believe she was busy. She couldn't get on. But she's fastly approaching 3,000 likes on Facebook. So go like her page. Last last week it was like 2,500. She's gaining more likes than than the shooter's mindset combined. Oh no, yeah. combined. It's weird. <laughs> so I wonder why. But there you go. Um, and that'll wrap it up. That's gonna do uh, episode 84 of the shooter's mindset. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank you guys for the questions. Hashtag meet sweats, and we are out of here. <laughs> Peace. Thanks, guys.